Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a few performance issues with enums in C-Sharp and show you how we can easily fix them. Now, I have actually talked about a part of this in an old video, I'm going to put it in the description in case you want to see it. I will cover it in this video as well, so you don't have to watch that video, but if you want a more in-depth analysis of what's going on, you can check that too. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, real quick, before I move on, I want to let you know that we'll be running an in-person workshop called Introduction to Effective Testing in C-Sharp and .NET in three conferences. That's NDC Oslo, NDC Minnesota, and NDC Sydney. So check the links in the description, and I hope to see you in person. And if you're watching this in the future, then check the description. I might have updated with future workshops I'm going to do in other places. All right, so what do we have here? Well, I'm going to show you what I have and where we're starting with. I have this simple color enum here. It has a bunch of colors. I copied this from the known colors enum in .NET, and I'm going to use that as an example because everyone understands colors. It's an easy enum. Well, unless you're colorblind, whatever. So the point is that there are a few methods when you deal with enums. For example, let's say color dot light uh, green. And then if I go ahead and say console dot right line and print that enum, what I'm going to see is light green the text. Now, it is very common in .NET applications to also use the string representation of the enum, not just the integer. I know some of you will say, I never had to do this. If you never had to do this, that is fine. But it is very common to be used in contracts, error messages, logs. It is not an uncommon thing. I've seen this a ton and I've used it personally a ton. Now, if you watched that previous video, you might have seen that the two string uh, method in enums is actually not really efficient. If I go in there, you're going to see that it's doing a binary search, it's building a cache, it's, it's doing a few things that are questionable at best. However, it is how it is, and that's the only reality uh, we know at this point. Now, this is one of the methods we're looking to improve. The second one is the enum.tryPause, and this is a method you use by usually passing down the text version. So, say, for example, light green, and then you say out color the color and this returns true or false if it matched it or not and if it did match it it will have populated this value uh, from the text that you gave here this is the other one this is again very common if you're doing any dynamic stuff and this is just one of the overloads in that method and then another one which is very common is the enum dot is defined method in which you either have the generic overload or the type of i'm gonna go with type of and say type of color and I can specify the value. Now, in this case, I think light green happens to be, oh yeah, so it happens to be this one. So I'm just going to say um, this. And if that is part of the enum, it's going to return uh, whether it is defined in that enum or not. So if I go to another random one, which is way out of scope, it will not return anything. This will return true. So these are the most common methods you will be dealing with uh, in the enum world. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to benchmark all of them in their current state with these implementations because I want to know where I am performance wise as I'm trying to optimize them. So I'm going to bring in uh, benchmark.net and I'm going to go real quick and add some benchmarks for them. All right, so here's my benchmark class. First, I have light green and I'm two stringing it to see how long this operation takes and how much memory it allocates. Then I have the is defined call, which will tell me if this um, integer exists as a color in the color type, which is an enum. And then I'm doing the try pause to see if it could pause it or not and return the value. So to run this, I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to quickly just comment all of this out. I don't need it. And I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run. And I'm going to say benchmarks over here. I turn this into release mode and then simply uh, run the benchmarks and see how our current operations in the built-in BCL perform. All right, so results are back. And if I expand this, you can see that we have uh, 20 nanoseconds for the two string one, 75 nanoseconds for the is defined and 111 nanoseconds for the try pause. And we actually have some memory allocation in the first two, which isn't great, but you know, 24 bytes is not much, right? Well, let's see how we can actually fix this because a lot of that information that we're searching for here is actually based on static data, data that doesn't change. So it could be based purely on compile time data. However, this is not the case. Now, 
how can we fix this? Well, in my previous video, I had a call to action out and I said that if someone wants to make a source generator that generates all that code automatically, then you can do it and you will see great gains. And one of the people who did that, probably not because he watched my video, but because it is a no brainer, because this has been raised by people like David Fowler as well, is Andrew Locke. Now, Andrew Locke, in case you don't know him, he has a great um, blog. I'm going to put it in the description. He has blogged about this package as well. Go check it out if you want. He has one new blog every week. Highly recommend it. And because we're talking about an open source package in this video, like with all my videos, I highly recommend you click the link in the description and you go and give a star to the project. Open source developers can use all the stars they can get on GitHub. So please, if you like what you see, consider giving it a star. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to search for Enum Generators. And it's the net .enum generators package. It is in pre-release, so keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and add it in the project. And now what I'm going to do is show you how easy it is to make a source generator for your enum. So all I'm going to do is go to the top of my enum and I'm going to say enum extensions. And that's it. And now what's happening behind the scenes is a source generator is kicking in it's inspecting this enum and it's generating extension methods. And as you can see now, we have 1,423 usages. These are all usages in the code that this source generator created. Now I'm going to show you directly the result before I show you what's generated behind the scenes. So what I'm going to do is create duplicates for those benchmarks and show you what the optimized or source generated version of all of this looks like and how it performs. So I'm going to say enum to string fast and the way this works in this case is I get a new extension called to string fast then I'm going to create a duplicate for this um, is defined and I'm going to say is defined fast just to distinguish between the two versions and what this did is I can now have a color extension so it's using the enum name and then it slaps the extensions suffix to differentiate and I have the, the same is defined thing. Now, in this case, because it knows that the type is uh, color directly, I don't need the first argument. So all I need to do is this. Uh, and then for the last one, try pause. I'm going to say again, fast. And now same thing, color extensions. So the name of the enum and the extensions. And I didn't even have to change the signature. It is the exact same signature as it was before. And now I have everything. And what I'm going to do is simply run the benchmarks. And once this is done, we're going to see how it compares both in speed and memory. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So let's compare one after the other. So the two string, the built in enum two string is like we said before, 20 nanoseconds. The optimized version with the source generator, one nanosecond. So 20 times faster here and no memory allocation. This is big. Then we have the is defined 75 times faster. Again, no memory allocation. And then the enum try pause, which is many times faster. And we didn't have any memory allocated before, so that is fine. So as you can see, this is no small potatoes. I mean, it is nanoseconds, but this memory you're saving here, depending on how much you're using it, you could see a difference. So if you're using enums in that way, I highly recommend you take a look to this package. You use it. It is still technically pre-release, but the more you use it, the more Andrew will be comfortable moving it to a full release. Now let's see what the package is actually doing behind the scenes, because I think that's very interesting. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, if you want to have a different display name for an enum value, you could easily say uh, display and then say name um, equals and then in this case use something else for for this specific one uh, so you could do it like this and the source generator will respect it in any case let's see how this is working behind the scenes so if i go to the too fast string method which is a source generated method as you can see it's switching on the enum now you might say well nick if it's a very big enum then this will actually be slow uh, no it's not uh, unless you have like 10 20 000 items in the in the enum it won't be slower so don't worry about it it's fine it's faster so that is how the the two string is working then the is defined similar fashion does it match the thing true or false it is all statically accessible data and in the end the default just says false makes sense um then we saw the is defined and the other one is well is defined has a few overloads and then the other one is a try pause you also have a try pause uh, ignore case. Um, let's go ahead and see what's in this try pause method. Here we go. So again, you have switches, you have cases, and if it is 
part of the default uh, case, which damn, that's a long enum, um, then it will return the false value and the default value. Now, one of the things I noticed when I was playing around with this uh, package was that there's a couple of methods that I don't like how they work behind the scenes. And I hope Andrew or someone else who wants to contribute to the project uh, sees this and fixes it is that the get values method which gives you all the values in the enum in an array and the get names method they both return a new array every single time so even though they're static methods they don't assign that to a backend field so they never cache it so you allocate a new string array every single time don't do that have a field cache the value return from that cache value every single time so if you're watching this and you want to contribute to the package this is a great first time pull request in any case like i said before this is a great new git package i highly recommend you give it a star on github for people like me who want to write super efficient code this is a no-brainer and i'm happy that people are using source generators to optimize code like this to be even faster and more memory efficient well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this video possible if you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more, and like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.